Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Jay Prakash. I'm an associate professor from the Department of Biochemistry, Faculty of Medicine, Massa University in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, me and my uh, team have uh, conducted this research. This is a published, uh, artic uh, published uh, res uh, research article titled Exploring the Digital Divide Between Preclinical Te Teachers and Students in an Integrated Medical Curriculum from a Malaysian Private University. I'm here to present this particular work. You can reach me at the given below email uh, ID. Uh, to give you a background of uh, what, uh, what uh, about this particular topic, let me introduce you to the current scenario. We un under the current uh, digital uh, revolution, we are all familiar with integrated uh, with we are all familiar with information communication technology. It has invaded our life in every aspect of it be it uh, the, the judicial system or the educational system or the financial system it is everywhere no one has ever and no one was able to to exclude himself from it so we all have a certain degree of perception and understanding about integrate of about information communication technology or abbreviated as ict now ict is commonly used in an educational setup in schools they have a lot of papers being published about uh, its role and its uses but however, the use of it in a higher education, such as a university, for example, in a medical curriculum, is still not standardized, although its, its use and role has been acknowledged. Let's look at the use of technology and its effectiveness among students. A few papers have come up with, uh, uh, with, with, with facts, uh, with data, uh, testing this particular uh, concept. Uh, this study done in Pittsburgh showed that a usually disruptive class without the use of technology suddenly transformed into a much more engaging session for learning or upon introducing a uh, technology. Uh, this shows that students attention can be achieved by introducing technology because students are invariably engaging themselves with or, 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 or interacting themselves with technology on various fronts on both social and academic platforms. Another study uh, done by Dr. Mohammed uh, it showed it, it, it showed that uh, integrated uh, uh, integrating uh, in ICT into a teaching curriculum is inevitable. All educational institutions are invariably moving towards it, knowingly or unknowingly. So this is a journey which we are all already on. It's now our uh, our effort to integrate them in a much more um, uh, sensible manner. However, some studies, uh, for example, those done by uh, Ng and uh, Gunston, listed out a lot of disadvantage of integrating this ICT. They showed how uh, in ICT can disrupt students' learning, how students should be very uh, responsible for them to engage in such kind of an independent learning process. So we have uh, articles which I give uh, to and, uh, and against this particular concept of, in, of integrating ICT into a learning environment. Let's look at the teacher scenario. What is uh, what, what kind of uh, articles do we have on them? Some uh, article, for example, this one published in, um, in 2018, I assume, showed that teachers are anyway compelled to, in, to integrate ICT into their teaching learning. Teaching, um, well, the, the choice is uh, no longer existing for teachers. They are compelled to adapt under the current digital revolution. Uh, another study showed that uh, those teachers who have uh, willingly participated or transformed or transitioned into integrating had positive effect on their teaching. And the students welcomed the, that particular change among the teachers. Now, this shows that uh, a lot of digital divide does exist under the current scenario. In fact, a study done in, um, on a Chinese student population explored this gap. It showed there is an evident uh, difference between uh, how student perceive and how teacher perceive the role of, uh, integrated, uh, of integrating ICT into teaching and learning activity. Well, none has been done so far in a medical curriculum or in a medical university. So our, our, our uh, intention of this particular study was to explore the digital divide in a university setup among students who are, who are classified as adult learners and compare it between the uh, 
the lecturers who are a mix of both uh, those who are familiar with uh, the digital platform and those who are not so we are looking at the scenario in this uh, setup to this effect uh, this study done by Ertma found that teachers pedagogic beliefs played a huge role we are all familiar how our teachers influence our learning in a medical scenario setup especially um, student teachers most certainly have come from a from a traditional teaching background using um, using blackboards and uh, chops and their pedagogic uh, beliefs come from that part their particular experience so how does that affect their learning or teaching process so the aim of this current study was to investigate the perception on the effectiveness usage of ICT in teaching and learning activities and to understand and analyze their correlation between preclinical students and teachers. The objective of the study was to investigate first the perception among students and then among lecturers and finally to correlate their perception and to see if there's any um, any relationship between what the students and uh, teachers think. This study uh, was, was is a cross-sectional study conducted in 2017 and 18 at Massa University. Um, the sampling done was using census. We used self-administered questionnaire. Uh, we used one questionnaire which uh, which which uh, identifies the usage of uh, ICT in learning. We used another questionnaire uh, investigating the perception of usage of e-education tools and implementation in e-course. Uh, both of these are pre-validated published uh, questionnaires. We, or oh, however, we have uh, done a small pilot study to validate this questionnaire for our current population. All these questionnaires were uh, validated a five-point Likert scale, where one was strongly disagreeing and five strongly agreeing. The participants who were in invited for the study were briefed on the objectives of the study and the questionnaire. Uh, only those willing participants were engaged in this particular study and an informed consent was obtained from them before the start of the study. This study was uh, ethically approved by the University Research Medical Council. So the results from the study, a total of 250 participants were engaged in the study of which there were 100 year one students and 100, 120 year two medical students and 30 medical lectures. If you look at the mean age of these lectures, lecturers engaging is are about 50. 50 was the mean years. Uh, for year one students, 20 was their main, mean age and uh, year two it was 21, the mean age of these year two students. As far as gender distribution is concerned, students had a higher female population uh, when compared to lecturers. Lecturers were more male lecturers in participating in this study. Okay, let's look at uh, a few initial findings. These are a few descriptive findings, which I would like to present here. If you look at uh, the kind of a tech gadgets that the uh, students and lecturers use, we notice that most of the lecturers use a lot of desktops compared to PCs or Mac, uh, compared to uh, smartphones or laptops or tablets. Whereas uh, the usage of last smartphones and laptops uh, were quite prevalent among the students, especially the use of uh, smartphone and laptops. This is for their educational and recreational use. Now, when you are when we ask them how much of this particular usage comes in for learning, I'm sorry about that. The usage of web services for learning, we noticed that uh, students have preferred more of YouTube and learning apps such as Osmosis and Khan's Academy. Use of Wikipedia was also very common or popular among students. When compared to lecturers, lecturers prefer to use more of authentic websites like Medscape, WebMed, and journals and, and national libraries. So these were commonly uh, or, or more popular among lecturers when compared to students. We have our own Moodle website, which is an interactive platform for engaging students teaching and learning activity, where we have a lot of uh, uh, quizzes and a lot of discussion boards kept. Both students and lecturers found it very engaging and they use it, uh, the usage was quite uh, well established for this particular Moodle platform. Let's look at uh, what kind of a web uh, services do they use for recreation. 
So for recreational purposes, if you notice, uh, these these students uh, engaged in a lot of chatting uh, and web surface uh, web surfing uh, activities, whereas the lecturers were more engaged in online business and web surfing compare and and email compared to those of students so both students and lecturers had a different kind of a usage as far as academic and recreational purposes concerned their approach was uh, depending upon their uh, perception of uh, learning and for recreational purpose uh, the uh, the the kind of activity they were engaged in now this is the questionnaire which indeed with with mean and standard deviation it display uh, for each and every item used in that questionnaire this questionnaire used uh, this questionnaire was to identify their technological usage their perception on technological usage for learning the second questionnaire were tested their perception on use of e educational tools and implementation of e course so this is again the mean and standard deviation for uh, each of these items used so I will leave it to your own leisure time to look at this particular data. Under discussion, we understand or we, uh, we inferred that students' general perception regarding integration of ICT into preclinical module was much better than that of lecturers. This was a correlation done uh, and uh, this correlation indicated this uh, result. So what, what, what uh, it implies is that students were more willing uh, for the idea of integrating ICT into their learning environment when compared to lecturers. Now, what happened is lecturers were found to be willing, but they, they, they said that they implied that clear objectives, rules and policies should be there before implementing the ICT. And lecturers also uh, indicated the need for students to be more self-organized and disciplined more so that the lecturers felt that even though the students were in their in their in their universities and they were categorized as adult learners they still were very apprehensive in introducing ict into their teaching learning environment in a more significant way because they felt that the students soft skills the students professional approach towards learning should be addressed before implementing the ict curriculum uh, the lecturers, uh, of course, uh, appear to be more cautious in integrating the online course into their into the preclinical MBBS curriculum. Although the MBBS curriculum currently used in uh, our university was integrated, the lecturers were not very uh, comfortable introducing it uh, uh, in a big way. Continuing the discussion further, I, pref I, 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 I chose to show the discussion on a on a side by side uh, view on students and, le and lecturers' opinion on certain aspects which we inferred from our uh, results. As we noticed, usage of ICT for teaching learning activities, students preferred a more quickly and easily readable resources like Wikipedia and YouTube. This also indicates that students uh, like to have different kind of a learning resources, probably depending on the student's uh, learning style and learning uh, approach. When compared to lecturers, lecturers were looking for more reliable content. So they were often you know, using Udemy for their learning process. They were more engaging in libraries, resources from libraries and journals. So they were more uh, engaged in authentic resources. Students were more for ready-made quick access resources. As far as perception was concerned, for online courses, students uh, largely believed that it is convenient and compatible to integrate ICT as it matches with their lifestyle. Whether we like it or not, a lot of student learning activity has been happening over YouTubes, over Wikipedias, irrespective of how good a lecturer is. However, lecturers are very, very restrictive on this particular approach. They uh, felt that online course should be introduced in a very in a very cautious manner, not disrupting the students' learning. Uh, as far as the issues concerned, both students and and lecturers felt that the computer skill, how tech savvy you are, largely directs or 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 largely affects the students' learning or teachers' teaching ability. Along with that, technical problems or issues of internet connectivity and the website issues all uh, can hinder 
um, the effectiveness of ICT. However, recreationally, students engaged in a lot of recreational uh, use, whether it is downloading media or playing games, uh, whereas lecturers uh, for recreational use were uh, very limited, uh, restricting to online banking, business, and web surfing. Um, the emotional content, uh, uh, analysis of emotional content showed that students use uh, devices to relieve stress or gadgets to relieve stress whereas uh, lecturers found that gadgets had limited uh, engagement for directing their emotional well-being. So the takeaway message from this particular study was there was a significant difference between perception of and knowledge of technology integration for education between students and lectures. Both learners and, uh, and, and lecturers agreed that ICT is more suitable for theoretical course rather than a practical uh, or, or clinical courses. Students need to be self-organized and disciplined. Uh, this uh, which was more substantiated by many, stu many studies that although adult, adult learners are mm, much more responsible, you need to have a strong sense of uh, autonomy and, uh, or, or before engaging in ICT. Uh, we found that lecturers did not all, did not completely disconnect themselves from the digital world. However, they were open for ICT and online courses, provided they were carefully regulated and monitored, which concurred with another study, which we investigated. Even though lecturers might differ from students in their thoughts about ICT, uh, they still acknowledge the fact that technology will help them in many ways. And, uh, and a, as a conclusion, teachers can't fix the digital gap nationally by themselves. But they can help equal the playing field for students directly under their care. They can substitute them. They can fulfill their, uh, their learning gap. But teachers do, do need help. These are my references that I used in, for this particular presentation. And you can quote my, um, my article, you can cite my article uh, in this particular format. My corresponding address and my email ID is over here. Thank you so much.